Hi there. This video is intended to show you the various features and capabilities of the network chart portion of WBS Schedule Pro. The network chart is a view that shows the tasks and the dependency between the tasks in your project. The WBS chart shows more of the structure, more of the top-down structure of the plan, how it's broken down into summary and detailed phases, uh, summary task phases and detailed tasks. The network chart, however, shows the tasks themselves and the dependencies between the tasks. You can create projects in the network chart. I can simply switch to the network chart. I can click and drag and I can create tasks. Now, I can't really create a structure in the network chart. That's done better in either the WBS chart, Gantt chart, or task sheet. Um, what I mean by structure is defining your summary tasks. Those are best done in one of the sheet views or the WBS by breaking it down using the WBS chart. But short of using the WBS, I'll show you how to create a structure in the task sheet. If I had created some tasks here, I can insert either another task and make that a summary by indenting, or I can insert a summary task just by selecting the summary task from the list of items in the insert tab. I can create a project summary. I could even create a design phase And with this, I can indent to create my structure. I can even create one more phase. Come on, fingers. And maybe one more task. And I can make this a summary by outdenting this, and that will make my structure. So if I go back to the network chart, I can see that I have the tasks. And I also have the, the phases or the summaries that I created in the task sheet. To create dependencies in a network chart, you simply click and drag between two existing tasks. I can create a, a new task by simply clicking and dragging from within one task to white space in the chart. That will create a new task dependent on the first one I started in. Or I can simply create a task by clicking and dragging in blank space to create a new task that's independent of everything else. And then I can link it later. I can create a new task in another phase by clicking and dragging across into that phase. Now, we talked about the, the horizontal bands or the groups or the summary tasks that are displayed in a network chart. But you could turn those off. If you notice up here, it says grouped. That means it's grouped by the summary task that you've defined, either in the WBS or the task sheet. And the network chart is actually the only view where you can turn off grouping. Everything else still has to maintain the hierarchy, but it, in a network chart, you can turn that off to just have a pure uh, logic diagram of tasks without the summary tasks involved. And again, I can create new tasks and I can uh, add and delete items as I see fit. A lot of the options for the network chart are in the format menu. So if I click the format menu, I can see many of the options. I can turn on and off a time scale. A time scale vertically separates the, the chart by time bands. If I click on the format time scale button, I can see that the time bands are banded by start. So all the tasks that start within a particular week will be in the individual time bands. I can adjust the labels. I can adjust the time band so that it shows every day, every week, every quarter, every month, and so forth. So you can have a time scale with a network chart, or you can turn it off by deselecting the, the time scale option. I could trace tasks in a network chart. Tracing a task means to identify all the direct and or indirect tasks associated with the selected tasks. So for example, if I had another network of tasks here, but I wanted to trace the tasks that feed into and out of the programming task three here, I could look at the trace options and say, do I want to trace forward, backwards, or both ways? And I can decide to only trace the critical tasks or limit the trace to how many forward or backward. But with this task selected, if I trace forwards and backwards, I can see all the tasks that are directly or indirectly uh, leading into this task or following this task. Removing the trace, I can see that these tasks up here, those aren't indirectly or indirectly associated with this task, but the line down here is. And that's what happens when I hit the trace. 
is it shows just the tasks that feed into and go out of the programming task three task. So that's tracing. You can adjust the fields that are in the boxes by hitting the fields uh, option. I can change fields. So maybe I don't want to show percent complete. Maybe I want to show the cost for uh, the tasks in the schedule. I can easily qu and quickly change what fields are listed in the, in the network chart. I can even add additional fields by inserting rows and add additional fields. But it's basically you pick a field in a cell and you change it by choosing this drop down list here and choosing what field you want to put in there. So that's an easy way to, sh to change what's displayed in the network chart. Other options for uh, the network chart are defining the different link lines. Um, you can show critical as a certain color. You can show diagonal link lines, which shows more of a direct path, so it doesn't route the lines around the, uh, the, the task. Uh, other options are you can show labels for the, the links, the dependencies. So that means I can show the type of dependency and how much lag there might be associated with a particular dependency. Now, the dependencies I've been creating here have all been finished to start relationships, meaning that one task must finish before the next can start. I can modify a dependency simply by double clicking on it. And by double clicking on it, it brings up the dependency form where I can change the style or type of dependency. I might want to say this one is a start to start with a certain number of days lag. So for example, the start between this one, this one would look better if it had more of a duration. So now you can see that this, this task down here starts one day after the start of this task. So that's dependency link lines. I can turn those on and off by using the link line option. I can define the colors and shapes and the fill of the boxes on the screen. That's real straightforward. You just uh, pick what you want to change, pick which boxes you want to change for, like critical tasks or critical milestones and so forth. One thing that a lot of users do when they're working in a network chart, let me put this back to a grouped diagram, is they'll attempt to move around boxes. You can move a box around by clicking on an edge and moving it out. And this will position the box where you place it. But what that does is it also locks the chart. And by locking the chart, what's that, what that means is it's no longer automatically positioning boxes based on the dependencies that you created. For example, if I create a new task here and I put it way over here, it's going to stay there. It's not automatically going to position this second box after the first one because now it's, the chart is locked and it basically leaves things where I place them. So when that happens, you'll see the word locked down at the bottom. That means things are not automatically being uh, repositioned based on their dependencies and their durations and, and so forth. So if I go back to the network chart format option, I can see that the chart is locked. And to unlock it and to let things be positioned automatically, select the auto layout option. And now things will be positioned automatically based on their dependencies. So that's a real quick overview of the network chart capabilities of the tool. Um, if you have any additional questions, you can always visit our website at criticaltools.com or email us at critical at support at criticaltools.com. Thanks a lot.